Back to that Kevin show with Kevin McCullough. And we're back from Times Square. Kevin McCullough, always pleased to have you with us. Uh, it was a big night. Uh, Ron DeSantis, uh, Carrie Sheffield from the Independent Women's Forum. What happened to DeSantis? Why did he just kind of go invisible last night? So my theory on that without any inside knowledge is that he felt, I think, a little bit boxed in because of what happened with the leak of, of his this campaign memo from the PAC. Because that memo said, hammer Vivek, hammer this, hammer that, go on the attack dog, be an attack dog. So he was kind of constrained that if he actually did any of that, mm -hmm. whether or not he was planning to do that on his own, separate from the PAC, then Vivek would bring up the document which he did not, nobody else brought it up on stage either, in part because I think he felt like he couldn't, that if he did, he would then be accused of being that puppet of the pack. Uh, but in but general, everybody else got the memo and carried it out because it was pile on Vivek all night long. Yeah, and that's, and that's where I think it really became uh, Vivek as the torchbearer for Trump, that it really became establishment versus insurgent again in the same way that Trump did that in 2016. VP material? It, well, it's funny to see him say, oh, I would never do that. I'm only running for first. Of course, he has to say that. But I just I have a hard time thinking he would say no to the fact that he could be one heartbeat away from the presidency. So I, I think he would be a fantastic VP. The other, other possibilities, if he says no, is if he is the czar of government deforestation, uh, basically, and, and trimming all of, of the fat in the bureaucracy, maybe that's his special role. I don't, I don't know. That's the only other role I can think of, but why not have that just be the VP? Yeah, no, that could be, well, and we can give the VP any job he want because they don't, you know, to quote Hamilton, have a real job anyway. Um, <laughs> So the idea that um, these candidates were trying to connect with different audiences, um, you know, I thought Nikki Haley had a couple of shining moments. I thought she and Tim Scott actually represented South Carolina very well. Um, I don't think either one of them have a shot, particularly of winning South Carolina, because they cancel each other out in their home state. And that is the all important third primary that whoever wins it for the Republicans becomes the nominee for the party. Um, but overall, the women's issues and what moms and women are looking for in the 2024, not just candidate, but president. Did you see it represented either in Trump or in the uh, men on the stage last night? Man well, I think, I think in general, from a policy standpoint, any of those candidates would be, and more importantly, the people they would bring into the White House with them would be light years ahead of who's there now. Correct. So in that respect, hands down, it was a win on the policy front as far as moving things more in a freedom direction. I did appreciate that Nikki Haley talked about you know the thirty trillion in debt, and she said we need an accountant in the White House. Uh, it was interesting to see a focus group. I know it's not scientific, but uh, in it, but it was CNN. Uh, they had a focus group of Iowa Republican primary caucus voters, uh, and they the first place winner was Vivek, and second place was Nikki. Um, and so I, I agree with you. I think she had some strong moments. Uh, I think the uh, she brought up and, and Tim Scott actually. I think it was Tim Scott that brought up. Uh, if you're born a male, you compete against males in sports. That's what you do. That's how I was raised. And that's a key issue for us in an independent women's forum and the legislation we're pushing forward. We just got signed into law with Governor Stitt in Oklahoma, the Women's Bill of Rights that protects women's prisons, women's sports, women's shelters, just recognizes under the Equal Protection Clause that there are biological distinctions between men and women. It defines what a woman is. We answer that question, what is a woman? And uh, so I, Tim Scott, I was glad that he brought that up. I, I, I sense that the majority of the people on that stage probably agree, although Chris Christie has said some troubling things um, in the last year or so um, that just didn't seem to make any sense at all. And I understand why his ratings are higher amongst Democrats than they are Republicans at present. Um, what else do you think uh, people were looking for uh, from last night's debate? And do you think that the field has, or this week's debate, and has the field uh, willowed at all? I'm winnowed at all. Have they, have they, are we, will, will we not see all of those people back on the stage in September? As I understand it, the RNC is increasing the polling threshold. I think, I think it was 1% in a certain number of national, and I, I believe it's going to go up to 4%. So I think from their perspective, they do want to winnow it. So I think we probably will, probably the people on the wing. So 
Chris Christie, Asa Hutchinson, uh, Borgwam, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, uh, gone, probably, most likely. Um, so I, and I think that that's, uh, that's, it'll be, what'll be interesting is that even if they're not on the stage, they could still have the polling. So I, I don't think we'll necessarily have, uh, them dropping out. Um, people are stubborn and uh, so, so we'll see, but I, I think overall it was definitely, like I said, a victory for, uh, just making the case that anybody on there is a what way better alternative to Joe Biden. What did you make of angry Mike Pence? Now, I got to say before I let you answer that I have known Mike and advocated for him and uh, worked on his behalf from the time he was a congressman. I thought he was a wonderful congressman from Indiana. I thought he did a marvelous job as governor. Um, I thought he was a good vice president. I, I'm sad that he and uh, President Trump had a parting of the ways over January 6th and, you know, hurt feelings seemed to carry on and linger. Um, but I did not understand angry Mike Pence. He, that's never been his persona. Yeah. And, and just knowing what I know, I, I don't know him as well as you do. I, I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever met him. I know, I know some other members of his family, but um, it didn't fit who his persona is. And I think that that, that was this weird dichotomy because on the one hand, he was trying to preach the Reagan shining city on a hill. But then on the other hand, he's, he's trying to be Mr. Stop Cross, it, Vivek. Stop it. My, yeah. Like get off my lawn, basically. And <laughs> I thought that was, what I thought was the most interesting exchange between those two was uh, when Vivek was saying, you're using a 1980s songbook and America's not what it used to be in the sense that it's true. Like I, I'm a grandma millennial. I like to joke. I'm on the older end of millennials. Millennials, Gen Z, look, look at our mental health. Like we're this gender dysphoria stuff. It's mentally health. It's a mental health issue. Um, it's, it's a cultural issue. The fact that it's contagion among these young girls who feel like they need, they need the social validation, um, the spiritual decline, the lack of spiritual participation, mental health is spiritual health. And Vivek, Ca encapsulates that so well in in a in a way that Mike Pence does. He, Mike Pence seemed to be in his in a bubble, and I I agree the aspirations of Mike Pence was expressing is what we aim for. But I think Vivek is much more of a realist, and that's ultimately what I found in this intergenerational struggle was that Vivek w seemed to be more mature because he was explaining the problem much more articulately than uh, and than in with fewer words. You know, I felt like yes. Mike Pence was stuck in 1986 for some reason. Carrie Sheffield, always appreciate your hard work with the Independent Women's Forum, and thank you for spending some time with us. Kevin McCullough coming right back from Times Square. Don't Ready go away. We'll be right back. That Kevin.